Hi everyone, welcome to part two of my introduction to yoga or back to basics series. Today we're going to move through sun A like we learned last time and then we're going to add a few more postures, go through my version of sun B, sun salutation B. Ashtanga has its own sun salutation B but I kind of have my own too. So we'll go through a few of those postures and we'll get started in a seat again. So find a comfortable seat however feels best for you, maybe sitting on a block or a cushion or even in a chair if that feels best for you. Take a moment to find a little bit of relaxation, release some tension. Lengthen through your spine and today we're going to learn Ujjayi breath. Ujjayi breath is long, slow inhales and exhales. And what we do is we constrict the back of the throat so that as we're breathing, we're giving our breath a little bit of texture, a little bit of life, a little bit of sound. So start to breathe in and out through the nose. Nice big inhales and big exhales. I don't know if you're picking up those noises in the microphone, but there's birds in this room, which is really lovely. And then now we're going to find ujjayi breath. So big inhale through the nose to fill. Soft constriction in the back of the throat like you were trying to say ah with your mouth closed or breathe fog onto a mirror. Big exhale, let it go. Keep that constriction in the back of the throat. Inhale. Exhale through the nose. One more inhale. Exhale, release. Feel free to come back to your natural breath or keep that ujjayi breath. Maybe you drop the chin towards the chest as you open the eyes. And then we'll start, start to find a little bit of movement here. We'll find tabletop first, so feel free to keep moving with that ujjayi breath. Every time I say breath to movement, what I mean is ujjayi breathing, but it does build heat, so just know that you can always come back to a natural breath and then return to ujjayi whenever you're ready. The point of breathing is to relax the nervous system, so if you ever feel like it's having the opposite effect, come back to natural breath. Maybe even come back to child's pose, let yourself relax, and then move back into the physical practice. Let's start in tabletop again. So bring your hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Starting with some cat-cow positions. As you inhale, cow pose, drop the belly, lift the heart, lift the chin. Exhale, cat, round the spine. Two more times, inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, neutral spine. Ground down into your left knee. And then keeping your right knee bent, kick your left or right heel towards the right glute. Lift your right knee up off of the ground. Keep a neutral spine here. So keep the chin slightly lifted, but crowning your head reaching forward. Take a couple big hip circles one direction with that right leg. And then switch it out. Take a couple hip circles the other way. Drop your right knee down to the ground, and we'll do the opposite with the left leg. So bring the left knee up, keep that knee bent, keep the spine long. Take a couple big hip circles one direction. And a few hip circles the other way. Drop your left knee down to the ground. Tuck your toes underneath your feet. Bring your hands about a handprint in front of where they are now. Find your high plank position. Lift the knees up. Bring your heels onto your toes. Feet are about hip-width distance apart. Lengthen through the spine. Press into the hands, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, lengthen through your spine. Let your head relax. Inhale, look forward in between the hands. As you exhale, walk your feet up to your hands. Find your ragdoll pose at the front of the mat. 
bend into the knees, let your spine or heart space release down onto the legs. As, in, as you inhale, find your halfway lift, hands to shins or thighs or blocks. Exhale, release forward fold, let it go. Inhale, upwards to the root to rise, reach tall with the hands. As you reach tall, let's grab the left wrist with the right hand. Bring your feet to hip width distance if they're a little closer. Pull up and out of your left hip and stretch over to the right. Keep really long spine, so don't just crunch into the right side body. Keep the right side body long as you drop over to the right. Inhale, bring your hands up through center, reach tall through the fingertips. Plant down into your left foot, slowly start to lift your right foot up off of the ground, finding half staff position. Lift your right knee, flex your right foot, starting to find balance in that left foot. If the hands feel uncomfortable bring, being up overhead, bring the hands to the hips. Take a couple ankle circles one direction with that right foot. And then other way, switch it up. Lift the right knee a little bit higher, flex the right foot, lift, 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 and plant it back down. Hip width distance apart, reach the hands up overhead. If you drop them into hips, grab your right wrist with your left hand, pull up and over, out of your right hip, stretch over to the left. Again, keeping both side bodies super, super long, lengthen through the spine as you deepen into the stretch. Bring it up through center, reach tall. Go down into your right foot this time, nice and slow. Start to lift the left foot up off of the ground. Lifting your left knee up in line with your hips. Make sure your left hip didn't pull up or drop super far down. Square the hips off, flex the left toes. Again, maybe you bring your hands to your hips. Take a couple ankle circles one direction and the other way. I know that it's totally normal to be super wobbly on this. We're just trying to play with the balance here. Drop that left foot back down. Inhale, upward salute, reach, rise, reach tall with the hands. Exhale, forward fold, dive over the hips, let it go. Plant the hands underneath the shoulders. As you inhale, find your halfway lift, lengthen through the spine. Maybe bring hands to blocks as you lift. Exhale, plant the hands, walk yourself back, find your high plank position. Drop your knees to the ground, press your hips to your heels. Child's position. Walk your hands over to the right. Big left side body stretch. Reach your left fingertips away from your left hip. Really press your left hip towards your left heel. Switch it out. Walk your hands through center. Over to the left. And remember that if this doesn't feel great in your knees, you can always sit on a block or a pillow. Reach your right fingertips away from your right hip. Press your right hip toward your right heel. Walk your hands back through center. Reach through the fingertips. We'll find downward facing dog. So bring your shoulders back up. Tuck your toes. And then press your hips up and back downward facing dog. We're going to do sun salutation A two times breath to movement. Feel free to go slower if you need to. We learned sun salutation A in our first class of this series. So if you're unsure of what I'm talking about, let's just return to the previous video. As you inhale, look forward in between your hands. As you exhale, bring your feet to your hands forward, fold at the front of the mat. Bring your toes together, heels a little bit farther apart. I like to bend into my knees to release tension in the hamstrings, let the heart space melt. Inhale, find your halfway lift, bring your hands to blocks or shins, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, fold, let it go. Inhale, find the long straight spine first and then bring it all the way up, upward salute, reach tall with the hands. Exhale, hands to heart center. Tuck your pubic bone up towards the belly button, lengthen through the lower back. Inhale, upward salute, reach tall with the hands. Exhale, forward fold, let it go. Uttanasana. Inhale to your halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, plant your hands, find your high plank position, walk your feet back. 
knees up or knees down as you exhale lower all the way down to the ground hips and heart reach at the same time flip to the tops of your feet roll your shoulders down and back towards your hips inhale lift up cobra pose open up through the heart space exhale fold let it go tuck your toes underneath your feet inhale through tabletop or high plank exhale to your downward facing dog lift your hips up towards the sky inhale look forward in between the hands exhale forward fold walk your feet up to your hands to the front of the mat inhale to your halfway lift lengthen through the spine exhale bend the knees fold inhale upward salute lengthen through the spine first bring the hands up overhead exhale hands to heart center inhale reach tall with the fingertips exhale forward fold uttanasana inhale halfway lift lengthen exhale plant the hands walk your feet back we're going to move through connecting vinyasa you can go through cobra like we just did or inhale charge your heels forward exhale chaturanga come halfway down squeeze those elbows in inhale upward facing dog pull the heart space through roll your shoulders towards your hips squeeze the glutes exhale downward facing dog bring your hips up and back inhale look forward in between the hands exhale forward fold step walk hop or float if you hop land with the knees bent bring your big toes to touch heels separated slightly inhale halfway lift lengthen through the spine exhale forward fold let it go inhale upward sit root to rise reach tall exhale hands to heart center hold reconnect with the breath here maybe you close your eyes find grounding in the feet calm the nervous system notice what just a little bit of movement does to the heart rate where your thoughts are start to open the eyes inhale bring the hands back up overhead upward salute exhale forward fold dive over the hips a little bit of change here inhale find your halfway lift lengthen through the spine as you exhale keep your right foot where it is you might bring blocks underneath the hands here if the ground feels far away and then bend into the right knee as you press your left foot to the back of the mat we're finding runner's lunge as you find runner's lunge you might play with bringing blocks underneath the hands and know that blocks have three settings so this is the highest middle lowest you can use whichever one feels best or play around with what feels best your right knee should be directly over your right ankle if that feels good and you can play around with it it doesn't it's not necessarily a rule um, there's plenty of times in life where our right knee is way far farther forward but just for health and safety let's bring it over the ankle really pull your right hip back left hip forward and then your feet should be about hip width distance apart if your left foot's right behind your right foot it's going to be really really hard to balance so make sure that your feet are hip width distance apart bend gently into your left knee really find that balance first and then slowly start to lift yourself up off of your right thigh find the balance in the feet first bring your hands to your hips slowly bring your shoulders on top of your hips as you do that, I would bend into the left knee so that you can do that without straining your lower back. You can keep your hands on the hips where they are or bring them up overhead. See if you can square off your hips, really pull that right hip back. Lift up through the heart space, bend deeper into the left knee if you feel like you're arching your lower back. Pull that pubic bone up towards the belly button. Once you feel comfortable here, you can start to play with straightening that left leg, but make sure you feel really comfortable here first. Take a big inhale here, ground down into the feet, and then we'll find warrior two. So keep your right foot exactly where it is. Slide your right heel or left heel, back heel down to the ground, and bring your hands up into a T, Virabhadrasana two or Virabhadrasana B, warrior two. Your left toes should be facing sideways, so parallel with the back of the mat. Your right toes should be facing forward. If you were to draw a line through your right foot, 
all the way to the back of the mat. It should intersect with the middle of your left foot or your left heel, whatever feels best for you. And know that in your warrior two, you can play with where this left foot is in space. Just make sure your right knee is not way out forward like this. And you can sink down really deep into that right knee, or you can have it as straight as you need to. Just make sure whatever feels best in your body. A lot of times our right knee likes to pull inward, so down and forward. Let's see if we can really pull it out and back, finding that external rotation through the right hip. We're trying to power up through that left leg, so press the outer edge of your left foot down into the mat. Really use the strength of your leg to press your foot into the ground. Another thing that happens in Warrior Two pretty frequently is that our upper body likes to go like this. Let's see if we can really pull the shoulders back up on top of the hips, ribs on top of the hips, in line with the shoulders and the hips. Reach your fingertips away from each other. Bring your gaze over your right fingertips, nice and gentle. If this ever becomes, becomes too much for the arms, you can always bring the hands down to the hips. Keep your legs exactly as they are. As you inhale, reverse your warrior, lengthen through the side bodies first, and then reach your right hand up and back towards the sky. As you do, your left hand can drop down to the left leg, but don't put pressure there. Lengthen through the left side body as you reach through the right side body. Keep grounding down into both of the feet, sinking into the right knee, straighten through the back leg. As you exhale, return to your runner's lunge, cartwheel your hands down, maybe back onto the blocks as you lift your left heel up off of the ground. Sink your left knee all the way down to the earth, flip to the top of your left foot, pull the hips back, find your half splits, Ardha Hanumanasana. Walk your hands back underneath the shoulders. If this feels uncomfortable in your left knee, you can always flip your mat so that you're doubling up the squish. And then again, remember that these blocks have three settings, so you can always come to the highest setting. Try to really lengthen through the spine. Flex your right toes as you deepen into the stretch. Let's return to our runner's lunge. So lift up through the heart space first, bend into the right knee, plant the right foot, walk the hands back forward to frame the right foot. Tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up off of the ground. Just keeping the right foot where it is, slowly bring your left foot to meet the right foot, find your forward fold again at the front of the mat. Inhale to your halfway lift, lengthen through the spine. Exhale to your forward fold, release. Inhale, upward salute, root to rise, reach tall through the hands. As you exhale, we'll find chair pose. So for chair pose, keep the hands lifted, press down into the feet, bend into the knees, and sink your hips back. If you need a little more stability into the, in the legs, one thing that might feel good is either bringing the feet to hip width distance apart and sinking down here, or what I love to do is bring a block under in between the thighs. So feet are hip width distance, and then the smallest setting in the block goes in between the upper thighs, and you can really squeeze your thighs together for finding stability in the legs. Bring the hands up overhead. Let's sink down into the knees a little bit more, and as we do this, a lot of times our lower back legs to arch. So sink down into the knees, but pull the pubic bone up, use the core, and then maybe pull the shoulders a little bit more on top of the hips. We're here for three deep breaths. You can always bring the hands to heart center if the shoulders are getting uncomfortable. If you have the block, let's release that. Inhale to your upward salute, reach tall with the hands. Exhale to your forward fold, let it go. Inhale to your halfway lift again. If the ground feels far away, bring blocks back underneath the hands so that they're framing the left foot. Keep the left foot where it is, bend into the left knee as you press your right foot to the back of the mat. Runner's lunge. Keep your left knee over your left ankle. 
Right heel should be lifted. Again, make sure you have a hip width distance stand. That will help with a lot with balance and stability in the legs. And then nice and nice and slowly start to lift the heart space up off the left leg. Lengthen through the spine. Bend into that right knee. Bring your hands to your hips. And then find your high crescent pose. Bring your shoulders on top of the hips. Sink down into that right knee. It's helpful to have the hands on the hips to make sure both the hips are facing equally forward and then pulling that pel pubic bone up, making sure one hip's not up or down. And then maybe once your hips are steady, you might bring your hands up overhead. Know that your hands can be wherever feels best too. So if this is too much in the shoulders, hands to heart is also always a great option. You might notice that my legs are a little bit shaky here. They always are in high crescent pose. This is a lot through the muscles and the legs and balance and stability. So it's normal if you're having a hard time with balance or shakiness to see if you can breathe into it. Let's move into warrior two, Virabhadrasana two or B. Sink the right heel down, open up through the arms, bend into the left knee. Again, you might play with the distance between your right foot and your left foot so that you can sink down less or more if you need to. See if you can keep your left knee on top of your left ankle and sink down as much as feels best for you. Hands can always come to hips or to heart. Square your shoulders off towards the side of the mat. Again, the back of the right foot should be parallel with the back of the mat. Left toes face forward. Hands reach out from the shoulders. Reach the fingertips wide. Notice if you're pulling forward like this, let's bring the shoulders back on top of the hips. And then a lot of times our ribs like to press forward in front of us. Let's bring the ribs on top of the hips. Press into the outer edge of your right foot, straighten through that right leg, energize. Bring your gaze over your left fingertips. Relax your shoulders. Flip your left palm up towards the sky, reverse your wire, reach your left arm up and back. Bring your right hand gently on top of your right leg, little to no weight there. Lengthen through both side bodies as you find the stretch through the left side body. I like to look up towards the ceiling here. Exhale, cartwheel both of your hands down to the ground, frame your left foot. Again, blocks underneath the hands is really nice. Drop your right knee all the way down to the earth. Pull your hips back on top of your right knee. Flex your left toes. Walk your hands underneath the shoulders. I like to press my heel, my left heel, a little bit farther forward so that my hips are square. Lengthen through the spine first. Maybe drop into the stretch, but know that staying upright right here is also totally fine. Breathe deeply as if you could actually visualize and see and feel your breath going all the way in through the nose and down into your left hamstrings, letting them open and relax. Next inhale, lift up through the heart. Bend into the left knee, plant the left foot, refind your runner's lunge, frame your left foot with your hands, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee. Ground down into your left foot, bring your right foot forward to meet the left here, forward fold. We're gonna find a seat here, so however feels best for you, bend into the knees, let the seat go. And we're gonna find Janyu Shirshasana, or head to knee. So bring your right foot out in front of you, and you can be facing the mat. I like when my right heel is on the mat, so I kind of go to an angle, whatever feels best for you. Kick your right foot straight out from your right hip, flex your right toes. Bring your left foot to the inside of your right leg. Twist your upper body towards your right toes, lengthen through the spine. This might be enough for you right here, holding this. If you want more, it should feel good through the left hip to walk the hands towards your right foot. Try to keep the spine long as you find the fold.
gently start to walk the hands back up to center. And we'll switch out sides. So kick your left foot straight up from your left hip, right foot comes to the inside of the left leg. Lengthen through the spine, twist your upper body towards the left foot, lengthen as you go deeper. You might just hold right here, that's great too. Or walk the hands towards the left foot, see if you can really pull that right hip, or right shoulder rather, square off towards the ground. Press your right hip down into the earth, it should feel really nice through your lower right back and right hip. Release, start to walk the hands back up towards the hips. That's all I have for you for our second session. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And in our third session, we're going to work on some more balancing postures. So make sure that you go through this section, section a few times, really get to know those poses in your body. Same with the first section. Really know all those poses in the body. Start to work on the balance breath, and then I'll see you in our third session. Thank you.